My name is Seng Yan Ning, CEO of B Seng Inc. Today, I would like to explain 3D Super DRAM. Let me explain what is 3D Super DRAM and why do we need 3D Super DRAM. Planar DRAM has memory cell array on one side and memory logic circuitry on the other side. 3D Super DRAM stacks cell array on top of memory logic. Therefore, die size becomes small and we could produce more die for wafer. It means 3D Super DRAM is much, much cheaper than planar DRAM. 3D Super DRAM reuses proven process flow and device structures being used in planar DRAM. When we compare planar DRAM and 3D Super DRAM, storage capacitor and memory logic circuitry should be the same. The only difference is cell transistor. Planar DRAM normally uses recessed transistor and 3D Super DRAM utilizes vertical SGT. The difference will be discussed. Okay. Let me list several challenges associated with planar DRAM. High cell aspect ratio is an important problem. It is growing exponentially as device shrinks. DRAM cell size is 6F square. It is almost a fixed parameter at this time. The low leakage current of cell transistor is very important to maintain charges stored in the storage capacitor. Especially, leakage current at high temperature is important. Plastic capacitance between storage capacitor and B-line should be minimized. Also, B-line series re resistance should be minimized. The most important and difficult challenge for planar DRAM is the high aspect ratio of storage capacitor. As shown in the graph, the aspect ratio of storage capacitor is growing exponentially as device shrinks. In other words, device scaling of planar DRAM is being extremely difficult. As we understand, DRAM scaling is being slowed down and manufacturing cost is rising abruptly, mainly because of scaling of storage capacitor. So, what do we do with storage capacitor? We will not change or modify storage capacitor used in planar DRAM. Though, we could achieve 400% more productivity using cell stacking technology of 3D Super DRAM. Because storage capacitor is reused, time and multi-billion dollar R&D for the development of new storage capacitor are not required. So fast time to market is enabled. Also, there is no risk involved with advanced storage capacitor development. Again, 3D Super DRAM stacks cell array on top of memory logic and produces 400% more dipole wafer using existing storage capacitor. It enables fast time to market and drastically reduces cost for R&D. Let me compare the characteristics of vertical SGT and recessed transistor. Both of them are good for scaling of distance between source and drain in order to minimize source and drain leakage current. Vertical SGT controls gate at all directions so it has better subthreshold characteristics compared to recessed transistor. At high temperature, it is well known that SOI has about 10 times less junction leakage current. One downside of vertical SGT is that no back bias is available. Of all, both of them work well for minimized leakage current. Here is comparison of parasitics of B line. Buried B line of planar DRAM reduces plastic capacitance between storage capacitor and B line. 
Follicular SGT is also very efficient to minimize the parasitic capacitance because bill line is located at the bottom of follicular SGT. Metal line is used for the bill line of follicular SGT and body transistor. Therefore, series resistance of bill line can be minimized. Overall, performance and characteristics of vertical SGT and recessed transistors are about the same. However, vertical SGT is extremely simple compared to recessed transistor. Vertical SGT needs only two masks, so it saves three to four mask steps. For example, no source and drain mask, no recessed gate mask, no water line mask, and no buried bill line mask are needed for vertical transistor. If you have impression that 3D Super DRAM is expensive to make, that is not right. Here is status of technology development. Process and structure are successfully verified. Device functionality and reliabilities are also verified. Here is a summary. 3D Super DRAM enables 400% more dipole wafer with a simple process, minimized uncertainties, and fast time to market. If you consider planar DRAM shrinking from 18 nanometer to 16 nanometer, then 20% more dipole wafer could be achieved. To do so, Multi-billion dollar should be invested for R&D and EUB must be required. In case of 3D Super DRAM, it needs less than $50 million for R&D and no EUB is needed, though it could produce 400% more dipole wafer. So, which one is better? It is simple choice, right? Thank you for watching and feel free to let us know your comment.